what's happening this is the uh, six month uh, half year studying Korean video with the MIA method uh, like 90% or more of young people here in uh, Seoul are wearing these masks uh, let's just have a little bit of perspective so in the US alone influenza A and B common flu kills 60 to 100,000 depending on the year that's per year now so let's count up SARS Ebola hantavirus and um, and coronavirus so that's less than 10,000 in 20 years so we have 60 to 100,000 per year it affects the same exact people so infants uh, very elderly and immunosuppressed so basically uh, anyone with a less than average uh, immune system so those are the only people that will actually would actually die from uh, influenza and coronavirus they're seeing not just people with a normal immune system so there so we have um, so we have less than 10,000 cases of all these viruses you can come and and over the last 20 years but no one says a damn thing if people are dying by the hundreds of thousands from the common flu because it's fear of the unknown right so uh, good luck wearing all these masks. I mean, if you're wearing it for the air quality issue in Seoul, that's cool. But uh, for personally, I, 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 can, I, I could breathe just fine without a mask. And with a mask, it's pretty hard to breathe. So uh, anyway, that aside, uh, hope everyone's doing well, uh, having a great weekend. So I made a video about the monolingual transition, how I'm going to delay it. Uh, that was a little bit of an impromptu video and uh, it's been actually quite fun and I think there really is about four to six hundred dictionary vocabulary in the sense that I'm seeing the same words repeat within monolingual Korean definitions and I actually having quite a bit of fun doing the uh, monolingual transition so the mass immersion approach the stage two guide on the MIA website basically describes uh, four stages to the monolingual transition uh, I think stage two is going to be the main stage where you uh, look up words you already kind of know in the monolingual dictionary and see if you can understand the definition. And I've been making monolingual sentence cards with some unknown words as well. And then the words in the, uh, mo the definition that I don't know, I'll make a bilingual sentence card for it. And I do see those words recurring. So uh, uh, that's been really good. And I think this, the original goal I had to understand 75% of monolingual definitions by the end of February is very realistic. It's very realistic. So I'm just going to go on with that and then uh, continue to immerse. So uh, immersion, uh, you know, the comprehension's slowly getting better uh, for simple conversations. It's uh, uh, with the uh, uh, Sponge Mind repetitive listening podcasts and their transcripts. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the uh, I plus one sentences I'm kind of making them as a combination of same thing from the dictionary, uh, a simple book, uh, a frequency list, and some of the transcripts from the uh, uh, Sponge Mind podcast. So um, uh, that's been going pretty good. So I think at the half year point, just kind of reassess goals. And we're, we're, uh, I, it's been definitely more enjoyable to learn Korean than I thought, but it's been slightly slower. And I think it's the comprehension is a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit harder than Japanese. Uh, maybe I'm just guessing there, but you know, uh, there's another thing like, you know, if you're watching a drama in Japanese and you have Japanese subtitles, let's say you don't catch the word. Well, if you know the, the kanji meanings, you can quickly glance and get an idea. Oh yeah, whatever, that means nature, that means, you know, natural, or this means strong. In Korean, there's tons of words, and if you don't know the hanjao, like the I mean, you could know the, the Korean roots but without knowing the characters. I feel like that's way harder. And knowing the characters would be simpler. And they're just getting rid of it everywhere in Korea. So uh, there's a lot of similar sounding words. And uh, it, but as uh, Steve Steve Kaufman says, he's actually right. I mean, there's you can't predict which words will stick right away and which words you're going to have to keep learning. And um, so the goal is by um, August 1st uh, will be... Uh, the one-year point goal is to have a, a general, maybe 5,000-word vocabulary in terms of at least a passive uh, working knowledge. And at that point, I would consider shadowing uh, because I think 
Uh, I, I was gonna delay output till the after two years, but maybe after one year, I'm gonna see how it goes. And um, 